Like, did you guys figure it out? Any of you? Oh, that's not a problem. So at least uh, all of you have that circuit that we built till yesterday, right? So everything is set up except that control unit at the bottom. And everything else is ready, right? For all of you. So if that's the case, <clears throat> I guess, uh, so all of you, please open your uh, circuit verse and then go to your circuits. So we'll just run through that example program once again. Right, so all of you can see the slide, right? Okay, so this is where we left off yesterday. You can see the example program on the screen. The grid on the left is the memory map. So the top two rows, like we said yesterday, are reserved for the program. The bottom two rows in green are reserved for the data. And in this example, what we are doing is adding the two numbers present at addresses 8 and 9, and then just outputting the result. So now, let's just move on to our circuit. So. Let's just go ahead and do that, right? Let's reload the page once. Hmm. Okay, I think I forgot to save yesterday. I'll just quickly add in the memory. So, So if you missed this yesterday, you can take a look again. So this is how we wire up the memory. We'll do it very quickly here. Just bear with me for a little longer. Almost done. Okay, so we're all at this stage, right? So let us step through that program once again. So first of all, we need to uh, write the program to memory. So I'll teach you how to do that. So click on the cell and then type out the instruction. So I'll share the, so for example, see if I want to put FF here, I just click on the cell and type FF. You can see it has changed. So you can click on this FF. So that's how it works. So I'll, I'll share the presentation once more so that you can see the program. So load in the data exactly like how it is shown in the grid. OK, Let's switch back to this. So this is how your memory should look like. So how many of you are ready with the memory loaded?
Okay, that's one. What about the rest? Two. Okay, that's three people. Come on, so everybody else, please do it, or or just let me know if I if I can continue. Just tell me, I'll just move on. And the others, if you don't want me to wait, right? Forgotten a lot of stuff here. So. Your signals have been missed out. So this is called ink. So please follow along with me. I guess you also would have missed these signals. So for the program, you have to make sure you have all the inputs. Um, increment. And this is Right. Okay, so I guess we'll begin by clearing everything out. So if you have connected your clear line to all the uh, components here, we'll just begin by clearing everything. Why is it in contention at tri state? Mm. Okay, I guess we'll come to that later. So again, clear everything out. So the whole circuit, uh, right now, I guess I will share it at the end of the workshop, unless, or this one, I guess, okay, I, I share it. Okay, I'll just put this circuit out there. Just give me a second then. Okay, uh, I put the link in the chat. So what you guys should do if you want to like just reuse the circuit that we have, if you do haven't built it already, click on that link, you'll go to the page of the circuit, click on fork, okay, there'll be an option called fork. So I'll show you that as well. So I mean, you'll probably see a page like this. So you see this thing here called fork, this button here. So all you have to do is click this so that then it will save a copy of this for under your account. Okay. Okay. We'll move on now. Right. So the first instruction, so we should start off by incrementing the program code, right? It's set to zero. So the thing is, it's ready to load this instruction onto the bus. So the first thing we do is move the data from the memory to the bus. So how do we do that? We need to enable this memory. Again, it's active loop. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we'll begin by enabling this. What else is enabled? Right, so we'll begin by enabling this. 
let's go. Ayo, let's go here on the bus. Oh man. Pardon me. To zero. Come on. Do any of you see something wrong with this circuit? I'm not able to find what's wrong here. There's still contention at tri-state. So that means two out two devices are trying to output data onto the bus at the same time. So don't enable this here. Uh, so has anyone spotted anything fishy here? Hmm. Okay, let me try this just a second. Oh man, had to happen on the last day. Shouldn't make much of a difference, but anywho, Okay, clear everything. What's wrong, man? Come on. I really don't know what the heck is going on here. Okay. Have any of you got it working? Anybody in the audience now? Uh, when you enable, when you write the memory and then when you like enable that, is it appearing on the bus without any errors? Not appearing, right? Same error? <clears throat> oh god This one be a problem. Whew, okay, we got it working. So yeah, I had the accumulator enabled as well. So make sure this is also a zero. Right. So we found so the, don't need to change any of this. So that it should work. I don't know why I thought that would work. Okay, so make sure every signal is disabled. So then then we clear it again. And since it's defaulted by at zero, so this is how it should look 
if everything is smooth okay again i apologize for this delay so this is how it should look when you start off so everything must be an unknown state so now the program counter is at zero so the first thing that happens is the program counter outputs its data onto the bus and then the pro the what it outputs is the address right of the instruction so that must go into the memory address register that is this so what should we do if you want to take data from the bus you should enable input right so the input enable of the memory address register is ldmar and since it's active low we just make it zero pulse the clock because this is a register we need to pulse the clock once so you won't really see a change because it's zero so that is done after this we must remove the clock from the bus okay so remove the program counter and there's another mistake oh god Again, everybody in your program counters, please, please make this edit that I just made. Open your program counters, delete that clock and change it to an input and name it clock. So this is a quirk in Circuitverse. So if you don't give a specific input, it's not going to appear here. So we had never given the clock to the program counter. So it was never counting in the first place. So I'll just connect it to the clock. Please remember this. So let's start again. So clear everything. Program counter output zero. Load it into MAR, pulse the clock. Zero has come to the MAR. Make sure increment is enabled. So pulse the clock not yet. So right. So this should be the state of the beginning, right? So the counter is incremented to one. Zero has been loaded into the MAR. Disable the counter. So these two signals here make them zero. Make this also one. So disable everything. So now the data that we need is in the MAR and the address that is required has been loaded. So now what should happen is when I do this, okay, this should be active low. So the memory is essentially ready to chuck the data onto the bus at this stage. So the moment I enable it, you should see 000, 000, 000, which is this number right here appear on the bus. Right, so how many of you reach this stage? So now eight is on the bus. So for how many of you people eight is on the bus? Let me know in the chat, please. So let's repeat. Okay, so I'm gonna clear everything out. Disable all your signals, okay? So let's go through all our control signals and disable them, okay? So we'll start with the program counter. We have this ink here, which is zero, disabled, okay? PC out N, zero, disabled, okay? Tilde LDMAR should be one because it's active low, disabled, okay? Tilde mem out N, it's again active low, so one is disabled, okay? And then we should just do the same for all the other control signals. So tilde LDIR is active low, make it one, disabled. Output enabled, disabled. This output registers load signal is disabled. This one's disabled. The adder subtractor, both are both of these should be zero. So that is they are also disabled. This accumulator output enabled should be zero, disabled. Load accumulator is one, disabled. 
Okay, so this is the initial off state, I guess you can say of the computer. Before we start anything, the first thing we need is the program counter to output its data onto the bus so that we can like load our first instruction, right? So how do we do that? We select this signal. So the program counter output enable. So once I do that, tada! you see zero appears on the bus. So that's where the counter is at, right? What you also want to do is make sure that, see, you'll have to move to the next address, right? Next instruction. So you would also want it to increment at the end of this, like once you're all done with all this, it should move to the next instruction, right? So I'll also enable the increment signal so that when I pulse the clock, it increments itself and it's ready to go like it's like ready with the next instructions address so that it can be taken later on okay so that is also put as one finally the memory address register must take the address that is given by the program counter so we should enable the input for that which is like we should let it load the address so we make that zero so this should be the starting state for like any instruction, right? So this is this is what should happen when the program counter uh, like gives the address of the instruction we want to execute. So everybody make this one, this one, and this zero, and then just pulse the clock once. So you shouldn't see much happening because the MAR was anyway zero. What you should see is this increment to one and this become like an unknown state. Right? So now the counter has incremented with the next address ready. So we don't need to in need it to increment anymore. So we first of all disable that. We also don't want it to interfere with the bus now. Right? So we, because we have anyway stored what we need in the MAR. So we remove that as well. So these two are disabled. We also do not want to load this unknown state into the MAR like, and cause some problems. So we disable that as well. So now the MAR is ready with the address. The memory, so now the memory is ready with the, it knows what address it needs to output. So now we just enable the memory output. So with this control signal here, it's active low. So once we make it zero, whatever was there at this address, which is 08, appears on the bus. 08. Okay, so are we all at this stage now? So the next step is, so the instruction is on the bus. So now the instruction, the destination for the instruction is the instruction register, right? So naturally the next step would be to load this instruction into the instruction register. So now how do you do that? Obviously you need to load, like enable the load signal for the instruction register, which is this, right? So this signal here, load instruction register, we make it zero because it's an active low signal. And then this pulse the clock. So now you should see eight appear here, right? So now eight has now been loaded into the instruction register. So now the memory's job is done. So you have saved the current instruction into the instruction register. You can now remove it from the bus. So I can do this. So now the bus is free for use again, okay? Also, we don't want to load this junk value into the IR again. We want to preserve this 8 that we have currently loaded. So we do that as well. So we disable the load signal. So now what you will see is this output gets split into 4 bits and 4 bits. So the first 4 bits, the lower 4 bits are the address of the operand which goes to the bus. And then the last, four, the upper four bits are the opcode, which right now is like just going nowhere because we don't have a control unit yet because we are the ones controlling. 
it just goes to lower so that's not a problem we'll do that later today so this one don't mind it so what we are worried about now is the address part which is this 8 right so the 1000 so that is ready to be output and it's waiting here so what needs to happen now is that needs to go to the bus right so how do you do that again enable the output so this signal right here instruction register output enable enable so now once i do this you can see that this has not read anymore so if you go all the way up you can see that it now has eight right so this eight is the output of this instruction register. So you had 0000 and 1000. That is the one that is on the bus right now. Now, what should happen? So this is the address of the operand. So this should again, so essentially what this address is, is the address of the data. And we need that from memory once more. So the moment we need anything from memory, we need to go back to the MAR, right? So the next step is load this, this address into the MAR. So how do you do that? Again, we should not disable this first because we know it's not saved anywhere. So we first enable this signal and pulse the clock. So once we pulse the clock, what happens? The data that is on the bus right now, it gets loaded into the memory address register. So now you should see this become eight once I pulse the clock. So, ta -da. so now that this address has been saved into the MAR, you need to free out, free up the bus, right? You don't need the instruction register to be outputting the address anymore because it's been saved in the MAR. So I can just disable it. Got it? So now once I've disabled it, the bus is free. The address has been given to the memory. You can see that the dark green square has moved to address eight that contains the data five. So the example program, if you remember, adds the numbers five and one. So now to get this five, to use this five, again, we need to put the output onto the bus because the bus is where all data gets transferred, right? So I'm going to just enable memory. So you can see that it's not red anymore, which means there's something on the bus. You can see it's now five, the value zero, five. Cool. So now that we have this operand ready on the bus, when I explain the instruction trick, do you remember that I mentioned everything goes through the accumulator? So now can you guess what's the destination of this five? So I want you people to tell me, where does this five go? That's on the bus. So who needs to take it? What's the destination of this data? Okay. So the destination of this is going to be the accumulator, which is this thing right here. Right? So now the accumulator must take all the data that's on the bus. So how do you do that? So now tell me if the accumulator must take the data that's on the bus, which signal must be enabled? The till load accumulator signal. So how do we do it? We just make it zero because it's an active load. So now when we pulse the clock, whatever is there on the bus is going to enter the accumulator. Okay. So let's see that. So this should become five now. Hmm. Uh oh. Okay, something wrong. Hmm. Oh, there you go. I made a mistake. I forgot to disable the load for the MAR. So now the MAR has changed its address to five. 
which is nothing. So we should remember that. Okay. Okay, to fix it, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to write a five here so that the five just appears on the bus again. So again, uh, just see what I'm doing. I just, so if you are at this stage where this square is dark green, uh, just make it five because I don't want to waste time repeating that process again. So just make it five. And then I guess pulse the clock. Nothing. Hmm. Just disconnect this. Okay. So what you do is just make it five and then like just disconnect one of these wires and then connect it again so that it just reloads. Okay, so now you should again have five on the bus. So once you have five on the bus, disable this low LDMAR. So Remember that to make sure this is a one and then make this a zero and then pulse the clock. What's wrong? Maybe it's connected correctly. Hmm. The clock itself wasn't connected. Okay. So if your clock is wired up correctly, five should appear in the accumulator. So now we have accu the accumulator now has the data five. We did a little mistake there, but technically at the end of this, you should have five in the accumulator. So how many of you have five in the accumulator? This is actually, so what we have done right now is the whole LDA instruction. So if you remember what LDA does, it is exactly this. So you give LDA and an address, it takes whatever data is at that address, puts it in the accumulator. So this is all the things that are going on with that one instruction. Okay. So we are through with one instruction. So now we can move on to the add instruction right so for the add in so before we do that we need to move to the next instruction right so the way we do that now is again we need to free the bus of all data so i can remove the memory output because the data has been saved on the accumulator now I enable the program counter. So remember the program counter incremented itself to one way back in the first step itself. So now if I enable this program counter, it should be ready with the address one. So again, so we're essentially going to repeat the first few steps that we did before this. So make sure everything else is disabled, only this the increment and the load MAR must be are enabled. Just have a quick check. So now when we pulse the clock, this one should appear on the MAR and the program counter will increment to two. Okay. So I'm just going to pulse. There you go. The MAR now has the address one. The dark green square has indicated that the address in the memory that has been loaded is one, the program counter is incremented to two. So now the program counter's job is done again for this cycle. So I remove it, disable increment and disable this as well. So we don't want to forget this because again, we don't want the MAR data to go away. So disable these three. So then again, we're going to repeat whatever we did before. 
So the instruction is ready in memory. Enable it. So now the instruction has appeared on the bus. So you can see it's a one nine, which means add address nine. So the add instruction is zero zero one, and one zero zero one is the address of the operand. So next, naturally, the destination of this instruction is the instruction register. So I'm going to load the instruction register. Pulse the clock. Why didn't it load? Hmm. Okay. Nothing is outputting. Input enable is up. Hmm. Why though? Whoa, what a big mistake has happened. Okay, I guess the whoever did the clock and clear lines, they messed it up. So, oh man. Clock here, clock here, clock here. So this, let it be clock. These are clear. OK, so what was happening was the clock and clear were like the same line. So the flip flop was getting reset every time. So make sure your clock and clears are properly connected. So yeah, now again, we pulse the clock and nine should appear. One nine. One nine in the instructions register. So that's ready. So now that we have saved the instruction in the instruction register, we can disable the memory, the output on the bus because it's been saved. Again, the opcode, the one part of it just goes to nothing because we don't have a control unit. The address part, the nine part is waiting to go onto the bus. So we just put it onto the bus. So again, we need this address. So this address is destined for the MAR again. So put it onto the bus, ready the MAR to take the address, pulse the clock, nine in the MAR. As you can see, the dark green square is now shifted to this uh, address. So this is now ready to be put onto the bus. Before we do that, we must make sure that we have disabled all outputs to the bus and all enables so that no values change. So make sure to toggle this and this. So the bus is again unknown. Dump the data onto the bus. So now we have the value one on the bus. Now, since it's the add instruction, oh boy. Why do I keep forgetting this? Oh, we need to do this again. So the accumulator's value is messed up. Why do I do this? That's why it's better to let a control unit do this job. Okay, how do we fix this? Okay, we'll do this. Okay, so I guess your accumulator is, is the value in your accumulator intact? 
is it five or is it even changed to something else? Because if it has been, uh, I'll show you how to fix it. So just grab any input, make it eight bits. So eight, right? And then disconnect this thingy from, so disconnect it from the bus, like this. So just disconnect this from the bus, give this directly to the accumulator, set whatever value you want. So we want five on zero one. And then enable this and then just pulse the clock back at five. Okay, thank God. Get rid of this. Oh man, a lot of things are going wrong. I should probably remember. Now the MAR is gone, oh boy. Okay, let's just repeat that for the MAR as well. Just give me a moment while I fix this. Okay. So I guess we're back where we were before. I'm just going to load the instruction register once more with this instruction. Okay. Right, so we're back where we were before. Right, so we have the address, the data ready on the bus. So everybody at this stage again, like proper stage, so the accumulator is five, instruction register one nine, And ready to go. So yeah. So now this data that the one that's on the bus is destined for the B register right here. Since it's the other operand, right? So now the accumulator takes one operand, the B register takes the other operand. So now to, to enable the data to go into the B register, we need to enable it, enable the input. One is now in the B register. So now at this stage, I can remove the, disable the memory because the data has been saved. And since it's a combinational circuit, it has added the two together and it's ready to be put onto the bus. Okay, so right here, if I do, if I click this, I should get a six on the bus. Okay, so there you go. So the addition has happened, six is ready on the bus. So this stage is the end of the add instruction. Okay, so now how many of you have reached this stage? So, so we actually uh, have uh, one more step left. So now that this sum has been calculated, we need to load it back into the accumulator because the accumulator is like, it does what its name says, it accumulates the sums and all the data. So now that the sum is on the bus, we need to once again enable load for the accumulator and pulse the clock once. So now the six has now appeared onto the accumulator. Now we no longer need whatever data is there on the like the bus. So we can just remove this, the output of the adder from the bus. So disable that. So now the accumulator must move this data over to the output register so that we can see the output. So again, the first step in that is 
put the data onto the bus, disable the accumulator, put the data onto the bus, and enable the output register. Right here. Okay. So once you have enabled this one, and I pulse the clock, the six will appear here. That's it. And then next signal is halt, which literally does nothing, like it just stops. So there you go. So that is the end of our program. So you saw how tedious of a procedure it was, right? So if you've reached this stage, just let me know in the chat. Like give me a thumbs up or something. So now you know what all work goes on behind the scenes in your computer when it's doing calculations at blazing fast speeds. So this kind of stuff is happening at, at the rate of like nanoseconds or so, like microseconds, nanoseconds. That's the rate at which these calculations are happening, right? So now that we know how this operation happens, we'll now move on to how to automate it and how to like program logic. So that does this work for us because we don't really want to be sitting and doing this work, right? So we'll go back to the presentation. So what does the control sequencer do? That's the circuit that's going to help us automate this procedure, right? So, it's literally the brains. So what, what input does the control sequencer take? It takes the opcode and then spits out a control word. So now what the heck is the control word? So we were manually toggling all these enable, input enable, output enable, load, sum mat, all those individual small signals are there, right? So they all constitute the control word. So all of these signals constitute the control word. So the control sequencer is going to output all of these at the same time, toggling just the ones that are required, depending on what operation needs to be done. Along with this, it also needs to give a halt signal. When the when it detects the halt instruction, it should let the, like it should just let us know that it's done, right? The program is over. So the way this happens, is through something called timing states, right? So you saw that we went through a series of procedures. They're all governed by these timing states. So now you see that I have this diagram of T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. The whole computer's operations are governed by these states. So anything and everything that the computer does, does it through these states, okay? So, the computer starts off naturally at T1, moves to T2, then to T3, then to T4, T5, T6, back to T1. So once it reaches back to T1, it means, it means like you're going to the next instruction. By the time you reach the, you revolve around this state and reach T1 again, you're gone the next instruction. Okay. So, There is a way we divide these timing states. Okay, so the first three, T1, T2, T3, remember that uh, we were doing this whole procedure of taking, loading the MAR, and then, uh, you know, putting the address, the like program counter outputs the address onto the MAR, MAR goes to memory, memory outputs to the bus, and then the instruction register takes it. And then, so at the end of that state, you know, these operations are going to be the same for every single instruction, right? So th those instructions are finished. Those operations are handled by these three states, T1, T2, and T3. By the end of T3, you will be at that stage. Now the remaining, they depend on what is the opcode. So depending on whether you want to add or you want to load to the accumulator, you want to subtract, you want to output, the things that happen in these four last three states differ. So now the these two segments, 
are uh, given specific names. So this part is called the first three states together call, are called the fetch cycle because you fetch the instructions from memory and put it into the IR. The last three states are called the execute cycle because that's when you're performing your operations. Right? So how do we represent this, you know, these states as a circuit? Because we really need to translate this into a hardware to, you know, make it work with our circuit. If you want to use this kind of logic in our circuit, we need to have an, a digital circuit that does this for us. So that is called the control, the T counter. So essentially what it does is this. So you have a circuit that has six bit output and then the, the bits that correspond to the state go high when it's reached that state. So it's essentially a ring counter. So you can see the output right here. So it starts off with a one at the MSB and moves all zeros. And then the one just shifts across one at a time and then comes back, right? So we need a circuit that does this for us. So we actually won't be going into the design of this counter because I'm pretty sure most of you would have learned this at some stage. Also, it will take up a lot of our time now. So what I'm going to do is we have already built that counter. So I'm going to be sharing that circuit with you and you can just plop it into your, uh, your circuits. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, just a second. Quickly whip it up. So, anybody have any idea how to design counters? So, uh, where should you start and stuff? So, when designing a counter, uh, so we have six bits. So, how many flip flops do you think we would need to design this circuit? Three. Uh, we actually need six. Because there are six bits, we need a flip flop to represent each bit. So we need six for a six bit counter. So like if you have six bit output, you need six bits. So I'll share a link in the chat. So what I want you people to do. So you'll see uh, something like this when you open the link. So what I want to do is click fork. So once you click fork, you'll get a copy of this circuit in with you. Right. And what you can do then is like, uh, let me show you. So once you click fork and you've opened the circuit, uh, you can just like, uh, click on the white space and then control A. So select the whole thing. Control C to copy. And then move back to your main circuit, main project. So this is a new project. So go back to your main project. Create a new sub circuit. So come here. Click on this plus. I guess call it T, T state. Counter, right? You have a new circuit and just control V. And then save it. So if you have copied and have the counter ready, just let me know. So to speak a little about how this counter is designed. So it, these flip flops are not the flip flops that we had used to build the register. So these are JK flip flops. And we basically you just design this counter the way you would any so you would start with the state table so you'd be like this is the present state this is the next state for each transition and then you would write down the excitation table for that flip-flop so and then you would like write down logical expressions you'll get key maps and stuff like that so then you would just figure out you'll get the logic for how to wire up this circuit and then you just do it so if you're ready with this in your circuit, just let me know. 
So one key observation to make here is this. That we have inverted the clock, which means this counter is going to change output when there's a transition from zero to one. So a falling edge. And that is very important because on when all the other operations happen on the rising edge. So when loading of register, like our other registers and all of that happened during the rising edge, we want the state to be set before itself so that the, the appropriate control signals are sent. So for that, we need this state to change one, like a half cycle before the other registers are ready to take in data. So that's why we have inverted this here. So this is very, very important. So if you want, I can tell you the procedure again. You'll open the link, click on fork, open the project, and then like select all. So just click on that white space anywhere and then control A and copy, control A, control C. Go back to your original circuit paste it. Okay, so a lot of you are ready. So if you want, we can just see the output of this. So what you can do is simply pulse this clock, you'll see that this one shifts. You see? See, it just repeats. So this is essentially moving around that circle. Okay. Right. So that, now that we're at this stage, we've designed the counter. So this is the timing diagram. So each time the edge falls, you, you the, the appropriate key state gets activated. So now let's go into the actual control signals that get activated during each state. Okay. So the T1 state. The T1 state is called the address state. So whenever this T1 state is active, this is what the control sequencer must output. So the PC out enable signal must be one. So like active and the load MAR signal must be active. So remember, this is exactly what we did when we started out our circuit. And of course you, you must also increment. So the count signal must also be enabled. I've missed that here. So at the T1 state, these three are the signals that must be active. Everything else must be disabled. Then the T2 state is called the increment state. So then, okay. So here you enable the count for that clock. So between states, you're pulsing the clock. Remember that. So I do this, pulse the clock and come here. So then I, I need to set the increment. That's all. So this, Literally, it does what it says. So the program counter is going to jump once. And then the last state, the third state in or the last one in the uh, fetch cycle is the memory state. So here we output the memory and load the instruction into the IR. So it happens very quickly. So technically, you should first load and then output. But it doesn't really matter because it's going to happen quickly anyways. So these two signals must be active during the T3 state. So these three states right here. So these three are going to be common for all instructions. So uh, any instruction you do, these things will happen. The exact same things are going to happen. So now where things differ is from the T4 state onwards. So now for each op code, there's going to be a different state. Okay. So we'll go through them one by one. So if your if your opcode is LDA, this is what happens. So till T3 state is going to be what I said before. So in the T4 state, so these two signals. So remember, this is exactly what we did again manually. We enabled the instruction registers output and we load the MAR. So when we pulse the clock, the data moves from the instruction register to the MAR. That's the end of T4. T5 goes back to the, so the, the MAR is now loaded the data that we need. So now we need to check it onto the bus from the memory. Again, we did this exact same thing. So now at this stage, the memory is on the, the data is on the bus. 
put it in the accumulator pulse the clock so we are done right but we still have a t6 state so this t6 state is literally you just deactivate everything and do do nothing so this is called a no operation state or a nop state so got that everyone so this is exactly what we did the same sequence of things although we did mess up a little in the middle so the same this is the sequence of things that we did manually for that lda instruction everyone okay with this so now we'll move on to the add routine so this also again t1 t2 t3 are going to be identical so now see here we would have reached so this is literally in the order of the program so you have t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 t6 of the lda we're back at t1 so t1 t2 t3 are going to be identical so what does that we first put the increment take the counter program counter put it into the mar put it into the memory get the data from the memory put it into instruction register increment the counter t1 t2 t3 done t4 state we have to enable the output of the instruction register once more load the mar because again we need the data from the mar and then we move on to the next state so again we pulse the clock here so we move on to the next state here output from memory so the data is ready in memory because the mar has the address put it onto the bus the destination is now b register so previously it was the accumulator now it's the b register now in the t6 state previously we didn't have anything to do but now we have to enable the uh, output of the adder okay so it's going to be some junk but this is the only thing that's going to be active in the t6 state so uh, b register is ready b register has given the value to this adder subtractor once we enable the output of the adder subtractor the sum is ready so then that goes back to the accumulator so that's the t6 state okay so again you remember this is exactly what we did now for the subtract routine it's going to be exactly the same as this except we are going to enable sum so so that we subtract instead of add everything else is exactly the same and then finally the out routine so the t4 state so this time the data is coming from the accumulator so you need to enable the output of the accumulator and then its destination is the output register so we need to enable the load of the output register pulse the clock we're at t5 that's it so once we load to output register we're done so t5 t6 we do nothing so remember between states you are completely resetting all control bits and then enabling only the ones that i have listed out here that's all and then the halt routine has literally nothing so it's just nothing so that is exactly how we are going to design the control unit so how have uh, everybody understood so we single step through it one by one previously and we have also seen that how we are going to manage how to do doing this automatically using the ring counter so the transition between timing states and we also know what is going to happen in each state okay so now that we have, we have learned all the theory behind like how to design the control unit pratisha will be taking over and then we are going to actually build the control unit now so Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting with, uh, you know, as he mentioned, building the circuit. So, uh, before that, let me present and just, you know, refresh our memory as to what uh, each opcode uh, is its code. So, uh, so I, I guess my screen is visible right now. So just put a yes in the chat box if it is. Uh, yeah, okay. 
so uh, yeah mainly as discussed before we have uh, three uh, instruction set here uh, the load is 0001 so just keep this in mind um, you know while building this so uh, this is not a very fancy circuit for this one uh, you know it's going to be pretty straight uh, so yeah sorry let's just start it mm -hmm. So let's add a main uh, another sub circuit called the uh, big instruction decoder. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's take the first. Uh, you know, basically those. Uh, these you know, we need four bits to represent uh, the opcode, right? So let's take these four codes here. Let that be uh, down and so just drag these lines so that. Yeah, okay. So, uh, as we saw before, for the load instruction, uh, when is the load instruction? When all these four bits are zero, right? And LDA is an active high uh, instruction. So, what does it mean? When uh, when this four bit bus thingy uh, is uh, all zero, we need that terminal, LDA terminal, to be one. So, uh, can you just quickly tell me um, in the chat box which uh, gate helps us do that? So, uh, which is that gate when all its input is uh, zero, outputs one? So, just uh, let me know in the chat box soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's correct. Uh, Rohit. So uh, let's take a notch gate here and make this as four bits. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, the input size. Yeah. And this is done. So let's give an output here. And name this as, uh, since it's an active low, we need to put the tail sign and the uh, LD. Yay, so we are done with one. So for the next one, again, uh, coming back again, uh, for the add instruction, only the LSP needs to be one and the rest needs to be zero, right? So let's uh, go and do that. So, um, anyone has any idea maybe how I should uh, design this switch gate I should use or any small changes to this circuit so that um, I get a uh, zero there? So, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is not an uh, active load, it's just one, yeah. Uh, yeah, for that, since it's one, I could just put a inverter here and, uh, you know, it would give me the same functionality. Uh, okay, it's just... Huh. Yeah, I mean, uh, a not K. So, this should be one. Let's... Uh, That let's just copy this one. This let it go here. Cool. And just drag all of these. So it's clear, right? So uh, only when uh, it will be one here, uh, it's uh, going to be uh, made zero again. So again, all inputs are zero. It's going to output one. 
see you can see here it has we have one here and we have zero here so uh this is going to be the add and uh, for the subtract one uh it's just uh, this uh the second most uh lsp is one so again we could use the same logic uh we used so Let's let it be here and yeah, the second most bit. Third most and boom. Yeah, and this is the uh, and then uh, just another one left. Uh, this is output, and uh, we've seen that uh, just only this the LSP needs to be zero, and uh, the remaining bits needs to be one. So uh, maybe instead of taking an OR gate here, uh, another gate with an invert, uh, with an basically not gate would help us. So uh, which gate do you think it is? Uh, can you guess instead of uh, an OR gate, which gate we should use with an inverter to make it uh, Okay, so actually in this gate, again, uh, the and would be handy because uh, only for the LSB, uh, it's zero, right? So let's give an inverter there and, uh, uh, you know, our job should be easier. Yeah, so uh, this is the, and uh, we have another instruction, right, uh, called the, halt instruction uh so when is it used when uh whatever addition subtraction load out everything it's uh finished so maybe uh like when you write a string in c uh there's an uh, character uh, at the end to indicate it's the end right so you could uh think of it uh like that so uh could uh, any of you tell me uh when the nand gate output will be one when will I have my uh, NAND gate output as one? So, okay, I think maybe it's two. Yeah, when inputs are zero. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely correct. So, uh, let's take a NAND gate here. Uh, again, we get four bit. Uh, yeah, and the halt here, uh, it's going to be an active load signal. So make sure to put a tail signal so that uh, you don't get confused. Yeah, so uh, this is it. So basically, uh, when you saw in this main program, this is the opcode line. Uh, as mentioned before, this is the address data and this is the opcode data. So from this uh, instruction, wherever you see here, so 08, so you have uh, zero to load and one here to add. So when it gets added here, uh, so how will how is my uh, circuit going to interpret key? Huh? It's add, uh, it's subtract. So this circuit, it's uh, exactly going to do that. Let's uh, save this first. And this. Yeah. Mm. We'll see if our layout is correct. Uh, okay, I, I guess I didn't name the output, so yeah, yeah, we forgot to name the input here. So this is uh, 7 because uh, that's the uh, 
basically this is seven this is six five four right so let's na name it that way to remember uh, Pratisha, i think you are sharing the wrong tab oh yeah uh okay okay sorry so i guess now it's uh, uh visible mm. Four. Huh. So basically what I meant by this 7654 is uh, here we have the opcode bus, right? Uh, this is 7654. So, uh, you know, it will be easier to uh, interpret when we have it. So let's save this again. Yeah, and... Yeah, I guess this should be good to go. It's cool. So let's uh, instantiate here. Okay. Let's uh, have it down here. And uh, uh, there's a link. Uh, uh, in the I am unable, I can see the PPT. Uh, no, I think yeah, that, that was before. Uh, 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 okay, okay, yeah. So, yeah, we have our uh, circuit instantiated here. So, uh, again, uh, we'll send the uh, uh, link to for the main control circuit because uh, it's already late and the uh, uh, take time so uh, just uh, open that circuit and on the go uh, we'll see how the circuit was built and uh, what's the logic around it so uh, till this time everyone uh, uh, built this circuit and it's uh, working right so uh, you can see here uh, only when it's uh, all zero you have one here you have here you have yeah so it's working exactly as we want it. In the doubts, uh, is the hall signal active low? Yeah, uh, yes it is. So uh, if it's uh, good to go, everyone, uh, you know, open this link and uh, as you forked uh, our before circuits, uh, do the same for this, uh, then uh, explain it. So once you're done forking it, uh, just let me know in the chat box soon. Okay, that's uh, good. Yeah, done. So, uh, let's name this control. Okay, so uh, this is how the control sequencer work and uh, we'll go through all the blocks uh, one by one. Uh, what is this uh, talk? Uh, just before Ram Prakash explained, right? Uh, what's our ring counter? Uh, we basically have T, 6, 8. So here you go. You can see all your states. Uh, so uh, this SAP and ring counter, what you just implemented, here it is. And uh, uh, this is the instruction decoder uh, you just saw. Here is the opcode uh, instruction. So basically, uh, which one from where will be getting this opcode? This is this is the one, right? You you have it above here. So uh, this is the one, and um, so these things are cool. We'll see now uh, how are these blocks uh, implemented one by one. So uh, I'll just explain uh, two blocks here and uh, the same logic will carry uh, it for the other blocks as well. You could uh, easily do it on your own. So uh, let's go to the first project that is this one. And uh, you can see here, what is this? Uh, so which instruction is this uh, LDMAR? So, uh, if you remember, uh, can you quickly drop it in the chat box? Uh, why, like, what does this instruction allow us to do? Or 
what does it allow us to control in the circuit? Yeah, uh, it's used to load ML. That's correct. So, um, yeah, and you saw that uh, load MAR, it's, we only require it, it in the T1 state. So uh, basically, when the program counter, uh, you know, it gets incremented and that uh, that it it is needed to be loaded to the MAR, right? So that is when uh, you have the uh, T1 state here and the uh, uh, T4 state is so once the uh, I, uh, that address is loaded into the memory register, uh, sorry, uh, just the memory. And from that memory, the data is again uh, outputted back. Uh, that again, it uh, needs to be loaded uh, into the MAR, right? So in both, we just need this instruction in T1 and T4 state. So uh, that's why we have here. And uh, uh, we have seen that since uh, all these are active low states, whenever uh, we see that uh, T1 is uh, T1 state is on, and any of these states, add, subtract, or load is uh, zero. Our output uh, should be zero because since it's again uh, active low. Uh, and uh, you might be wondering why do we have this AND gate as separate? Because uh, independent of these uh, instruction, whether it's uh, add, LD, or subtract, being CB, uh, if if my circuit is in the T4 state, that means it has already figured out uh, what is the uh, opcode or what is the command among these. So as soon as we have the T4 as zero here, uh, we need to, uh, uh, you know, we need to do this again. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was sharing the wrong tab. Uh, Okay, so uh, I'll just uh, explain it, uh, these once again. So uh, yeah, here you can see, right? The T4, it's uh, separate with, uh, it has a separate AND gate than the other. As I mentioned before, uh, if, you, if it's in the T4 state, it has already figured out which state it is. So as soon as you uh, make this as zero, your uh, output, it, needs to get uh, uh, reflected here. So uh, you have your uh, output here. And uh, if T1 is zero and any of the states is zero, again, at that time also, you need to have your output as zero. So uh, this is how uh, you know, your load MAR works. So uh, basically, uh, you just list down all the, at points at which your load MAR should be high. And uh, you could uh, maybe plot a truth table, use KMAP or any online simulations to uh, come to this conclusion. Or sometimes it might be intuitive key. You know, you, uh, you can uh, build your uh, circuits like this. So this is about the uh, load MAR. Uh, any doubt in this? Or uh, like, no, the trick in building all these, you know, blocks is just uh, you know, keeping in track when these particular, uh, like in which in which state, which particular control bit uh, should be on. Yeah. Okay. So I assume uh, I believe uh, everyone uh, have understood this. So the uh, memory out logic as well. So when does your memory uh, need to output its uh, data on the bus? Uh, Again, as it's uh, mentioned here, T5 and T3 state. So uh, in this uh, T3 state, uh, uh, you know, the instruction is outputted on the bus. Right? So at that time and uh, in the T5, again, the data uh, after the instruction is loaded into the IR register and that uh, 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 and that instruction is decoded. And again, the data also needs to come out of the same RAM, right? So that happens uh, in the T5 state. So in again, in both these two states, I need my uh, memory out to be uh, zero. So uh, again, that's how uh, the same logic goes to as to why T5 is, uh, has a separate AND gate here. Uh, it's the same logic. So. 
uh, you know, again, it's all pretty similar to what I explained for the uh, lower MAR logic. So, uh, again, if you keep on tracking all these things, uh, you can, you'll arrive at this control sequential block. So, uh, we have pulled, uh, you have seen, right, we needed the uh, inverse of uh, uh, T1 bar T2 bar. So, we have uh, put inverters, I mean, or use uh, not gate to uh, get these states here so that you know it uh, looks clean and uh, at any point if a circuit is not working it's easier to debug so everything is ready right now all that is left to uh, do is uh, instantiate this circuit in our uh, main one and uh, uh, start building it so uh, insert sub circuit and uh, Control sequencer. Oh, okay, it's vertical. So let's just quickly make this according to our convenience. Uh, uh, you could do this. Uh, Okay, you know, you could uh, simplify all these things and, uh, you know, uh, make it horizontal to connect. But for now, I'll not be doing that. Uh, you guys know it, so you could just uh, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay, just let me quickly figure out why is awkward. Uh, hmm. Hmm. So, uh, this is very clumsy. Let us just this is our clock. Uh, this is our period. Let's show. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, uh, this should be good to go and, uh, yeah, and click on save here because control S doesn't work. This, uh, here. Let's go to main and uh, yeah, we have. So here we have the uh, op code, right? So, you know, we left it as it is because we didn't have the, this control unit at that time. So let's just. Uh, put this. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So here uh, again, what you need to do is, uh, uh, you know, all these increments data uh, manually again. Just delete that and uh, come all the way and see. Uh, you can see all the increment early MR enable everything is mentioned here uh, you could just sit and connect all these uh, inputs so it's going to be pretty uh, pretty much the same thing mm, let's do that for another one uh, pc out okay 
uh, comes back down and okay then load mar okay then memory out here you have uh okay you know it's looking super messy right now but you could uh, uh, do this in a much better way like edit the layout and uh, make it more readable and stuff Um, okay, I guess this is uh, opting the data. Mm, okay, since it's not set yet, uh, you'll be getting data. So uh, that that is fine. So again, load in AR. Uh, Yeah, and then I are out. You have it here. Yeah, so you know, by the time this uh, this thing is done, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, anything you have, uh, you can put it in the chat box. Hmm. Let's do whatever we have. Load out register. This is this. Okay, and uh, this is the load P register. Uh, okay, this is also done. Yeah, don't worry about the uh, error again. So sub uh, enable mm. and then again sub so basically this put to oh. Yeah. Mm, okay, yeah, uh, uh, you know, it's pretty tedious. You are left, so we have our uh, we have done this uh, already. So we could just uh, come here. So basically, when you edit the layout, you could, uh, you know, make this look really cool like this. So that if it's horizontal, you know, it's easy to uh, interpret our circuit. Basically, makes it look better. So uh, this is all. Uh, I guess uh, remember on the second day, uh, I showed that you know this is the last circuit. I mean, the final circuit you will be going to build. So this is uh, how it is. So I believe each and every uh, person, each and every thing, what is supposed to be uh, doing here, I guess you have understand and uh, understood that. So any doubt in this circuit, just uh, let me know, please. By the time you could just uh, enable the clock and just see how it works. So, yeah, you can see here it was uh, the same circuit we built. So, we could disable the clock right now and uh, clear it.
Okay. So, uh, any doubts till now again? so any doubts again till now any part uh, you want me to repeat in the control sequencer or uh, anything So what we built was pretty straightforward instruction decoder. Uh, you built it again. All these blocks you uh, just refer to the control bits uh, and uh, just figure this out. So uh, as you can see here, the end result is that uh, you know any number of uh, eight bits you could uh, add or subtract. Uh, you have almost uh, a 16 word memory and uh, you could uh, put any kind of uh, output here. So this is what we have built. So uh, technically this is the uh, SAP1 circuit uh, what we have built here. Uh, we'll be sharing this uh, circuit with uh, you so that uh, any problem uh, if you have uh, you could take a look at this again and uh, you can uh, so once you are done with SAP 1 uh, you could uh, read SAP 2, SAP 3 so those are pretty cool uh, you would have seen jump statements uh, in the assembly right so uh, you could do that with uh, SAP to it's pretty uh, interesting and uh, it would really help you in a long run in digital design domain. So uh, this is all we had uh, to show. Uh, any particular uh, instruction or anything uh, you want to try out in this circuit or any doubts you have, uh, maybe do this instead of this circuit could be better. Any ideas uh, as such? Or again, any part uh, you have any confusions with, or uh, if you uh, enjoyed this whole three day workshop, uh, just let us know as well. Any doubts uh, or any, any feedback as such? Uh, one more small observation. So remember, you, you guys made a halt signal, right? So you must be wondering where does that go? So I'll just show you how to use that signal. So I wired everything up. So this halt signal, the what you should do is take it and then like give it. So put a try state before the clock, like after the clock, and then give the output to the try state. That's all. So when the halt signal goes low, your clock will be essentially disconnected from the circuit. That's all. And of course, don't forget to connect the clear and the clock to the control unit as well. That's it. So you can probably try the programs that we have written now. And we can probably have a look. And that's all. Thank you guys for attending. Uh, we'll be sharing your certificates uh, in a short while. Until then, we have a feedback form and we have also shared a link to the presentation that we guys showed you. Thank you guys again.